Good evening. We're back with Crime TV, you guys. And as promised, we're doing our next reading on the list, which we have chosen Michelle Blair. How's everyone's July 4th going? Um, I know that we got about nine more months of fireworks, y'all. <laughs> I know it. To listen to when you're trying to take a nap or get a good night's sleep. So just to warn you about that. The fireworks, um, they do a number on me, y'all, as far as my allergies. It's really strange, so please just work with me, okay? And let's get started. We're going to be doing Michelle Blair. Now, I'm going to warn you ahead of time, okay? Because that's what Crime TV does, that this is not for the week. Okay. This is not a reading for the week. All right. I will also have, as you can see, the spirits agree. And um, yes, it's not for the week. Um, I will have also information if you'd like to look up this case in the description. Okay. So that you may follow along if we're going to do a part two, part three. You know how we do it. We get to the root of it, okay? Also, the next two on the list will be the rapper Enchanting. I have not forgotten about this wonderful viewer. And also, Jocelyn Nungary, okay? So this is a big case going on right now um, about the 12-year-old girl. Very sad stuff. Now, I will tell you, I've done the rapper Enchanting one prior and also Jocelyn and Gary prior. Okay. And I've done slightly some of Michelle Blair. Now I kinda and I haven't used these in a while, y'all. The crime cards. And there's only specific cases that I like using these on because it really gives me a good roadmap to everything okay all right so y'all i'm telling you this case is um oh my goodness it's so heavy it's so heavy the energy is a very heavy earlier the spirits were welling so there are spirits welling for these children okay and it's just so emotional and heartfelt y'all that i felt the welling and i wanted to well with the spirits it's it's just really if you've ever heard like see what's going on with the evp is even strange okay listen the camera things are going on now right we're talking about some serious heavy stuff y'all the welling for these children, what happened to these children. It's it's so emotional and it's so heart dropping, okay? And if you've never heard welling before, you need to look that up. It's like a very old ancient art of it too, where I can hear the spirits. It's it's really crazy to pick up emotions on that level. Okay, so I do have the name of the oldest, or to me, she comes off very mature, uh, the daughter named Stoney, okay? Um, there was also a brother who was murdered. There's a younger brother, and I believe there's another sister, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, so of course, these children want their blind justice. And I feel a lot of this case is coming, okay, wow, from a predatorial type of curse. So I feel the mother was abused. 
which caused the children to be abused. And I know we don't like to use that as excuses, but I can't tell you how many times um, I can tell you about generational curses. It's just the roadmap to evil is what it is. Uh, we talk about not dealing with our childhood traumas and things in our lives that lead to other things. And this is the story. It's going into the story that I feel these children lacked a father figure or their fathers in their lives. And again, we've talked about the importance of that. I don't feel that it would have gotten to this extremes, y'all, had the fathers have been more involved. But I think Michelle, Michelle Blair was so off her rocker, y'all, that these fathers didn't even want to deal with it. And that's no excuse. That's no excuse because this is who you had children with. So this is what you have to deal with. You have to step up as a man. Okay, and there is a lot of secrets in this case, so come on with it then. Secrets that happened to Michelle Blair. I definitely feel there was some abuse, some sexual abuse, maybe light physical abuse, mental abuse, emotional abuse. So she definitely grew up in a life of abuse okay this is kind of like a family curse a generational curse that needs to be broken this talks about her imprisonment but also imprisoned mentally so i feel like this is how she feels and also she has some form of mental illness or illnesses okay that need to be addressed and dealt with. But it's also, I get what they're saying is just pure evil, what has happened here. Okay. Because as you know, the children are deceased, the ones that she murdered. There's a lot of corruption in this case, a lot of things that are not told correctly. And I feel these children and even their fathers were in fear of Michelle Blair. I mean, she's something to deal with, you guys, especially when she goes into her rages. So abuse are the lines of, and I feel I want to be careful because as I do believe there's still a child that is, there's two children that are still living, I feel. So I want to be careful, okay? But I do get abuse in the home. I get maybe they were locked in rooms. Very sadistic, harsh punishments. <sighs> Poverty um, in every sense of the word. And I feel there is a very huge sense of neglect because... If this were not true, I just really feel it couldn't have gotten to this point. So, absolutely, there is a huge feeling of neglect in some kind of void, okay? Because the police should have been involved a long time ago. And why I feel like the fathers were scared of the mother... Which I get it, because like I said, um, she is nothing to take lightly, okay? I feel the children were very afraid of her communication. So these fathers should have stayed in closer communication. Also, I feel like she was not keeping in communication with the fathers. There is a lot of negativity, toxicity with the relationship between her and the fathers of these children. And I feel 
a lot of arguing, a lot of cursing, a lot of things that should never be said in front of children. Um, it is breaking down a home foundation. And I feel Michelle Blair was taking out a lot of her anger, not only on these children, but also the fathers of these children. To the point I'd even say she hated them. And that's very strong to say. But someone I feel was watching them. Maybe there were like some reports to CPS or um, neighbors like what in the world is going on over there? Is something's off? You know what I mean? Um, there's people that have been inside her home that can see clearly there's something off. And I feel like she put most of the responsibility on Stoney, which is not fair um, as far as the upkeep and looking after the other children. So she was very much a very mature girl who had to play the mother role to protect her siblings and make sure that they were okay and to just know that she was targeted the most is so unbelievable because she really was an asset to Michelle Blair. <sighs> because she just mentally, um, the mother couldn't mentally do it. But I feel she was getting things from these children. It could have been benefits. It could have been uh, whatever have you. And we're learning more about this case, you know, about the abuse. Okay, going into arrested development. Time. And we've also talked about fate. How we wish we could have the power to change things, but when they are written, those are things we cannot change. So this was inevitable for those children because of the huge void, the huge neglect from everyone, the school, the parents, the neighbors, the people who knew Michelle Blair. Um, knew that this home environment was not good, okay? There's a lot of politics involved with this. So I feel like Michelle, Michelle Blair wanted to be in control. She had to be the main person running things, but the thing is she couldn't run anything because mentally she's unstable. Now we're going into things spiritually as well. There's something spiritually going on with her. I don't know what y'all believe in, but I would even go as far as to say a possession. And that's scary. She never took care of her anger issues that have resulted from years of her trauma and pain. And her pain was written off by so many people that she felt was supposed to care and protect her. So this has been something that is poisoning her from the inside. And this eventually came out. But she's always been a very uh, controlling person, a very um, easily angered person. <clears throat> Again, wanting to be in control, but unable to be in control because I feel like Stoney was in control and the other son that she killed was the ones basically holding everything up. These poor children felt trapped in this situation. Helper. So this is speaking of Stoney. She was the helper, the female it's sad to think that a kid is more capable of running a household than you are. And I'm not going to say at 100%, of course, but better than the mother was doing, okay? 
And that's the truth. Now, Michelle Blair, because of the things she has been through, is definitely one of these traits. And I mean to the extreme. We're talking narcissism, sociopath, psychopath. She has these traits. She wants to be in control. She doesn't like to be talked back to, backed in a corner. She has very, very strong sociopath and narcissistic traits. Lots of hidden secrets and ones that she won't even tell. There's a lot of lies and a lot of curves in her story that she knows is fabricated, but there are some truths in it as well. And I feel what she's very angry about is the fact that the fathers were not present but if you can imagine trying to be present in a positive way um dealing with this type of personality it's very very difficult okay so there's an investigation then because she felt like she got a victory but she didn't she lost some really good kids that um even despite the abuse and neglect, really, really still love their mother. You know, that's just children, All right? Um, not sure, too sure about, of course, what has happened is they're not as forgiving as I thought, but um, they still stuck by her side, which is mind blowing to me, okay? And I don't think she really wanted to be that type of mother, you know. I feel like maybe she left them alone a lot or left the others in charge of one another while she went out and kind of did her thing. Um, and we've heard about that a lot in these stories. And again, I feel like she's lying about some things. And this is what I feel like she has been lying about is the fact that she is abusive. The fact that she is evil the fact that she made up a whole scenario right that she did this because she felt the smallest child was being molested which is still even extreme okay and what i feel is really messed up about it is um the story that she came up with is so disgusting you guys and um something I know in my heart and I feel the spirit speaking to she did not or they did not do this this story was made up to make someone feel like someone going this far could be justified but it didn't even happen But just to even make up a story like this will show you how mentally deranged she really has become, okay? And I believe that she did hurt those children. I feel like she beat them. She did other things to them to hurt them. And it's all for her control to keep them under fear and submission because she wants to do what she wants to do. All right. I feel that drugs may have been involved or she was seeing guys that were like doing drugs, selling drugs. Um, again, we talked about how she would leave those children alone in that home many, many times. And the nerve of these narcissistic parents who feel like their, some of their children are different from them. They're not as worthy. They are not as 
royal. They pick and choose who they idolize, okay? And I feel like this was the youngest one, the youngest son. Very interesting. So you would probably say he was like the golden child, okay? This is when I don't feel she hurt as much as the other children. No love in her heart, okay? Very cold, calculated person. And I feel like she thought this up, like how to get out of, come on now, how to get out of this um, mother duty. But what a sick story to say about your children. They have faith they would get out of this situation, but of course nobody thinks it would be that way to get out of the situation, if that makes sense. So it took those children dying for the other ones to be set free. Because anyone in this woman's care, as her mental health is breaking down as time goes, is just not safe, okay? And I feel this runs in her family, her mental illness, and this curse we talked about by someone who betrayed her and betrayed her overseer. Again, she's a killer. And she killed those children. And this was done by dark forces because, again, I really do think it's something inside of her that's not right. Okay? And it's not just because of what she did. It is because there really is something spiritually in her that is is really really bad okay and you can see it if you pay attention to some of her trials you can see it come out <clears throat> she is deceiving the world that she's innocent and again that story that she made up to do the act, this unthinkful act that she did to these children of hers, okay? There's just, that's not even an excuse. But just to think that she made a story up like that is just wild. Um, She was tired of not receiving money from the fathers. She was struggling. She was in poverty. That was also stressing her out and breaking her down mentally and spiritually. But not because she's like, oh, I can't take care of my children. It's more of, I'm selfish. I'm not getting anything out of this. Because the children to me were more of a, a possession more of an item, more of whatever she could benefit from them, you know, like making them clean the house, making them cook, making them take care of her. Um, and if I had to really narrow it down, I would say they would be yes men, like, you know what I mean? Almost like slaves. Um, but... Those children got sick of her and they warred up against her. And this is where the war began. Because anyone who comes against her or um, tells her about herself or says she's in the wrong about something, how to fix it, then now we're at war. So this is definitely very narcissistic energy, okay? And it's saying, listen... So, also it's stating those children didn't want to listen to her anymore. She had brainwashed them for a long time since they were little, little kids. But when they got, you know, when kids get older, they're not going to um, 
play those same games with you. Those same tactics won't work. They're not like four and five anymore. They're going into their, well, puberty, if you will, stages. So now they're starting to clap back. You know what I mean? And this is something that she did not like. But these are children. This is the stages that they go through. And if you were not using using your mothering for evil, then it wouldn't have happened like that, you know? Well, her thoughts is she wants to get out of, again, this responsibility. And she thought she'd get away with this and just run away. This is what she's, she really thought. There's a lot of conspiracy theories about what happened. There's still growth out of this situation. The two that are still living are going to get a lot of growth and insight from this experience. It is terrible. I just feel like those survived kids are not, y'all. It would take way more than counseling, okay? They saw things that you cannot even imagine. And um, their hearts are just broke. I mean, this was their siblings this happened to, okay? And I feel like all they had was each other. I really hate stories like this. Just give me a minute. <laughs> But there will be a rebirth, okay? And um, justice will be served, especially for these spirits that are welling for these children. Oh my goodness, I can feel the emotions and the heart dropping. It's, it's just, y'all, you need to go look at this case and understand what I'm saying, all right? You need to look up this case. Um, I can't say a lot of things on here. I cannot. Be, I mean, because it's, 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 well, it's pretty bad. All right. So please go look up the case in your spare time. We still can find with these little cards as well. Oh my goodness, so secluded. She kept those children secluded from people because that's what narcissistic people do, especially narcissistic abusers. They seclude them from everybody. So they don't know what's going on, so they can't tell nobody. And I feel like that's what she did with these kids. Like they stayed in the house all the time. Preparation. So this is planned. She was preparing to do this. Okay. This was planned. Not something like she woke up one day like, oh, I'm going to have to do this. Okay. Like she says. And she is totally going to put this like on someone else. Maybe even say one of the kids did it or didn't go as she planned. Now that's for sure. But when she got started, she's like, there's no turning back. I've got to go forward. Okay. So there's a lot of lies told in the interrogation room that are not so. And also, I feel the school failed these children. Um, there were times they went to school hungry, looking disheveled. Um... trust but they trusted their mother for a long time but there was a period where that trust was beginning to break 
So maybe she did this in the evening hours or getting rid of evidence at night. She's very cold hearted. I cannot. And Stoney and her brother are flying high, so it's okay. Family. It's not a strong family unit. Missing the fathers in action. Um, protecting their children, their babies. This was something that was lacking. She took a chance doing this, okay? And now she's got the nerve to try to hide everything. And she hid those children too. Why do I feel like this is stony in the freezer? Wow. Oh. She did get rid of some evidence, y'all, that's very vital to this case. Maybe even possibly in water somewhere, okay? And this happened close to home. It took for someone to go in their home and find the things that they did. Seeing cracks will appear in the future and that law enforcement is involved with finding out what happened. <sighs> I feel like there were times the fathers would call and she would just turn it into an argument to detour from the whole situation that was really going on in that home, okay? So that was one of her tactics. If you know, you know. If you've ever known a narcissist, that's what they do, okay? They totally get you on another subject that ain't got nothing to do with what, what you're talking about. All right, can I get anything here from something maybe Stoney would like to say about this case? Oh, I just, I can't, like, I have to take a minute because I'm getting, um, How could she say that about those children? I cannot. I just feel like they were in disbelief. I'm serious. Like, what is really happening? What are we really being accused of? What in the world? And the little boy was so scared that he admitted to it because he was scared to say she was wrong. Wow. What do you want to say, Stoney? Present. In this present moment, I have nothing to worry about. I take life step by step as I follow my desires and intuition, joyfully overcoming any bumps along the way. When I live like this, I don't have to worry about the future. Okay, so where she is now, she doesn't have any worries, you guys. Not these types of worries anymore. And she's taking her life on the other side step by step. And she follows her desires and intuition. The progression she did not get to live out here, she is doing there, okay? And she is full of joy. And she's overcoming any bumps along the way. When I live like this, I don't have to worry about the future. <clears throat> so she's not concentrating like on her mother's payback or... um. 
things in a negative light, okay? She's moving forward. I feel like she knows it's going to be taken care of, okay? Because she understands spiritual things. She does not have to hold on to this, all right? All right, now, Stoney, you go ahead and step in your uh, confidence. I hear you. Okay. Um, shameful, shameful. I know. You ain't got to tell me. These cards out in here. And I don't feel like her mother's drug use and drinking helped either. You heard what I said. Mm -hmm. Not dealing with the things she was dealing with. And there's times, you know, her mother would try to start arguments. You know what these narcissists do. And I feel like the oldest one would say, look, just not today. She didn't even want to deal with it. That also made her very, and as you know, very agitated. Okay, because Stoney was stepping into her strength as a woman. Okay. You made the young girl a woman too early. You had her being a mother to the children. Now that she's stepping into a more mature part of herself, which she definitely shouldn't have been doing so early, but because of the environment, now it's kind of like you got a daughter who's too grown for her age, and y'all both are going neck and neck, right? And I also feel like Michelle Blair was jealous of Stoney. Because, hey, let's face it. She was a better mother. Growing to be a better person. And she couldn't stand that, okay? Ooh, okay, so you got a lot to say. So I feel Michelle had a lot of um, work to do within herself. You know what I mean? Like self-worth and value. She needed time to heal. She needed to find out how to heal herself. She needed to do a lot of shadow work and self-appreciation. That's what she was lacking big time. <clears throat> and most of this, I'm not saying is 100% her fault. Because she did tell on her abuser. She did. And she was overlooked once again. And that's a very hurtful thing. Well, when I pick up the cards, because she was so emotional, ooh, hit my elbow, that hurt, because <laughs> she was so emotional, let's see here, so I do feel these fathers would call, they would call, if they didn't come by, they would call. And she would act like they were just totally neglectful. That's not 100% true. It's not too far off either. But that's not all the way true. So she needed to make healthier choices. Again, self-love and self-care, being happier, loving life. She needed light. She had a lot of dark energy. Not that we don't see where it was coming from, but uh, inner work is something else, y'all. Inner work keeps you from doing crazy stuff like this. 
or something developing into a spiritual possession or a mental illness, you got to do that shadow work, you know? The mask, um, hiding true feelings, pretending in delude, gaslight, and personify. So again, we are talking about a definite narcissist, y'all. Very narcissistic energy. <clears throat> the chaser, fear of abandonment, chasing codependency. So this is her mother. I feel like she feared the children leaving her. Or her having to take care of things, you know, kind of getting off her lazy seat. Um, so, again, this is why she kept them very closed in. Because she was codependent on those children. And she's supposed to be the mother. So, that's really wild. <clears throat> now, mind you, Michelle Blair's mother was not the greatest example okay as well not using excuses though heartbroken deeply hurt and sad feeling lost grieving despair breakup so this is the feelings of the children that were murdered addiction codependent obsession and restraint possession and control emotional block definitely traits of the mother Out there meeting someone new, setting a date. So here we go with these mothers who decide, oh, I have children, but now I want to get back out here and pretend I'm 20 again. It doesn't work that way. But to a narcissistic parent, again, this was planned. She wants her freedom. But she doesn't want to take on responsibility either. So what to do, what to do. She comes up with this crazy story that she feels will justify this horrific act. When I say horrific, I mean that. Even the things that led up to this horrific, okay? Yet, I just don't feel a grudge from these children. I don't. I don't feel it. And you say, well, how can this be? There are so many things we cannot explain, especially how children can still love their parents. We hear these stories all the time, y'all. We hear them all the time. And um, I think these spirits are more in shock of what happened than anything. Because they're like, why? Why and how could this happen? You know? And when the story was being told to them, I just feel they were so blown away. Like, this was just so crazy, y'all. And, again, the youngest boy admitted to it because <clears throat> he was scared of his mother. She's a scary person. When she flips out in, into that personality with the one she's possessed with, and it's not narcissism, but those are her traits. But she's possessed with an evil spirit, for sure. And I think... Um, when that comes out of her, again, y'all need to go back and look at her trials and see what I'm talking about. These children were petrified, is the word I would use. They were terrified of her. Okay? And I think the fathers were too. You know what's sad is now Stoney wants to come in and start talking. 
And I feel like she's just saying I, I wanted to go at that point. I was over it. I couldn't take any more, you know. I was over it, over the abuse, over the accusations. And she really was accusing Stoney of some crazy stuff, you know. Um, even before the last thing that she made up about, you know, them doing that or whatever, which is not true. Not true. I don't feel Stanley would have ever hurt her little brother in that way. And the way she told the story, especially, right? Um, <clears throat> the weird thing is she's also telling me I had dreams up until it happened. It's having nightmares. So that's interesting. Um... It's like Stoney knew, but she just surrendered. She really surrendered. You know, this woman should be ashamed of her, so I'm serious. Like, I just can't imagine. She just really wanted out of this situation. Um, what's sad is there might have been talks about her getting out, like going to live with another part of her family or getting away from her. You know what I mean? And that also agitated Michelle. She wanted full control over those children. And it's all for the wrong reasons. And um, again, the children are more like items, like something you own, a deed or something, you know? Um, she should never have children. She should have never had children. Her heart doesn't have the capacity for it and also the way she thinks is just terrible. She's violent. She has rages and mental illness or illnesses. Um, yeah, she should have never been left with those kids. And I think those fathers knew it. But I get to there's another side of her that's very persuasive and convincing which is also a part of what was going on during the trial and she just convinced everybody you know she had it she could do it she could be the mother she could take care of them kids and that was further from the truth okay I know there was the other daughter. Um, she was kind of getting up there too. And I feel like, and I know this is really sad, but I think she just wanted the youngest for whatever reason. He was the golden child. We all hear about this in narcissistic parents. Possibly he could have had a different father or she just saw the little boy in a different way. Um, But she didn't want, you know, to have the responsibility of that many children, if that makes sense. Because she wanted to kind of do her thing at some point. But also she didn't want to be without them as well because, again, she was codependent on them. So it's kind of odd that you don't want them, but yet you don't want to be without them either. You can't have both, you know. So she decided that she just wanted to be free and possibly just have the little boy and do her thing, you know? 
and she was going to con concoct this crazy story about um, what they've done to justify her actions, which still didn't justify her actions. In fact, it only proved that she is one sick individual. Okay. So I just, you know, wish blessings to those children who have passed and also the survivors. And I hope she does pay for this. This is pretty dark and disgusting. And um, I thank Sony so much for coming forward. She's a very courageous, smart young lady. And um, sad that some horrible things really happen to good people, you know? So I feel she is really smart and had a really good heart and she did take care of her siblings and was going to school. And despite her circumstances, she was trying to find a way out and make a better life for herself so that she could be a good mother and possibly help her siblings as well. Um, I, this is, I possibly may do a part two, but I'm telling you right now my feelings. This was rough because, like I said earlier, I was dwelling inside with the spirits, and um, it's just so sad. It's sad. But I want Stoney to know, and also the little boy that was murdered, that... Um, the spirits have not forgotten about you and there's others out here that are still very heartbroken over your case that we don't even know you like that and we're heartbroken. And not for a minute do we believe your mother's false story, okay, to try to cover her tale. Um, we thank you, Stoney, for your being there helping your siblings at the time when it was needed and also helping your mother despite what happened. And um, we thank you for strong young ladies like you, okay? And thank you for coming forward in the reading and may also your brother that passed with you be blessed as well and we need to start getting more involved, y'all. If you have jobs where you can help a child or pay attention to what's going on with children or anything like that, please step up, okay? We don't need to keep hearing stories like this, whether it be elderly people that are being misused, whether it be children, disabled people, whatever, get involved, okay, so we can stop reading cases like this as much, and again, I thank you for all of my viewers, y'all know what to do, like, share, subscribe, again, we love you, Stony. thank you, thank you for being a part of this reading, and possibly we'll do a part two, but I'll, I'll have to be very careful how I do that one, okay, so, because I'm telling you the details of this case, y'all. You'd have to go get a drink. Um, but again, I thank you for um, staying with me during part one. It was not as graphic as maybe some would have wanted it to be to un get an understanding, which is why I said I'm going to leave it in the description. You can go look it up for yourself. We may come back for a part two to get a little bit more descriptive, but there are things I can't say on here and I can't go too far into it, if you know what I mean. Um, but again, y'all know what to do. Like, share, subscribe. Love y'all. Um, and we will get our new readings in as soon as possible. All right, y'all have a wonderful night. Good night, Stoney.